Welcome to the BTM Channel's 27th video short on space exploration, innovation, science, and technology. SpaceX launched the South Korean military communications satellite Anasis-2 from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station's Launch Complex 40. The payload and launch resulted from Lockheed Martin's satisfaction of a contract offset in a deal with the Republic of Korea for 40 F-35 fighter aircraft. An offset is a common practice in multinational military sales where contract awards are predicated on either the purchase of goods or services from the buyer or a reduction in the cash price with goods or services from the seller. Interestingly, Lockheed Martin subcontracted both the payload and the launch. The satellite was built by Airbus and the launch was executed by SpaceX. The defense and space giant had an option of building the satellite and launching the payload on an Atlas V from the United Launch Alliance their joint venture with Boeing, but it appears that it was cheaper to subcontract both. At around six tons, the satellite formerly known as the K-Milsat-1 will be South Korea's first dedicated military satellite. The actual customer was South Korea's Defense Acquisition Program Administration, who awarded the contract to Lockheed Martin in 2014. The name Anasis-2 is an acronym that stands for Army Navy Air Force Satellite Information System 2. Anasis-2 supplements the Koreasat-5 Anasis-1 satellite that was launched by the Marine Launch Services company Sea Launch on August 22nd of 2006. The satellite shared communications duties between South Korean company KT Corporation, which provided internet and television services, and the South Korean military. Koreasat-5 was replaced on October 30th, 2017 by Koreasat-5A, which was also built by Alania Space, now owned by Talus. The Kriasat 5A was also launched by SpaceX on a Falcon 9. The Kriasat 5A communications satellite appears to be solely dedicated to KT Corporation's needs. Similarly, with the launch of Anasis 2, the South Korean military gets its own communications satellite. SpaceX was able to record its 57th successful recovery of a Falcon 9 first stage. This is also the fastest turnaround time of a booster with a reflight within 51 days. The booster, B1058.2, is also noteworthy in that it was the same booster that launched the Dragon 2 Demo 2 spacecraft on May 30th of 2020. At the time of the launch, there was some speculation that the booster would not be reused, but instead be retained by NASA for display in commemoration of the first manned commercial space flight. That appears not to be the case in the short term. Although if the booster survives its 10 cycles of launches that it is rated for, it still could be turned over to the U.S. Space Agency. For the first time, both fairing halves were also successfully caught by fairing catching ships. The twin recovery ships, named Ms. Tree and Ms. Chief, were located around 500 miles east of Cape Canaveral. The Falcon 9's fairing shells, which are 43 feet tall by 17 feet in diameter when joined together, return to Earth under a type of steerable parachute called a parafoil. The fairing recovery boats are each equipped with a giant net to catch the falling fairing halves. SpaceX has been able to catch one fairing half in a net on prior missions while the other half was retrieved from the ocean, but the Anasis 2 launch marked the first time the company has caught both halves before they landed in the ocean. Catching the fairing with the net avoids seawater contamination, which increases refurbishing cost or even renders the fairing half unusable. The fairing shells flown on the NASA's 2 launch were brand new, although SpaceX reused a fairing for the first time for a Starlink launch in November of 2019. The $6 million cost for new fairings appears not to be off-putting to skittish customers not comfortable with used launch components, but SpaceX has no such qualms on launches for its own broadband internet constellation. SpaceX started trying to retrieve its fairings in 2018 for launches from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California, and later moved the ships and equipment it uses for that purpose to Florida, where it launches more often. In addition to saving money, there's another reason why SpaceX wants to perfect this aspect of the launch system. Musk has said previously that he'd potentially consider adapting the fairing catching ships to also catch Crew Dragon capsules as they return to Earth reducing risk for astronauts and recovery crews who currently have to collect them from the ocean. SpaceX's Dragon 2 capsule was originally designed to self-land on solid ground like the first stage of the booster, but the company reluctantly dropped that feature when NASA pressured them over the development schedule. Getting NASA to certify the Dragon 2 for dirt landings was going to be a real chore, and the agency was a lot more comfortable regarding crew safety with proven reliable parachutes. 
The only parachute failure on record for a manned mission was that of the Soyuz 1 capsule in 1967, when cosmonaut Vladimir Komarov was killed. Thus began a 53-year streak of parachute successes for U.S., Soviet, Chinese, and Russian space programs. What's your take on Lockheed Martin subcontracting the Anasis 2 satellite and the launch to SpaceX? Share with us by dropping a comment below. We hope you enjoyed this briefing on the launch of South Korea's first dedicated military satellite. If so, click that like button. Not a subscriber yet? Clicking the subscribe button and the bell notification icon will help both our YouTube standing and keep you informed when new episodes are released. Links to our previous episodes can be found below. Stay connected by occasionally checking our Instagram feed, where we post content from our upcoming episodes and from episodes past that you may have missed. Make sure you follow our Twitter account where all new episodes are announced. And finally, join us on our Facebook page where we cover current news and events related to channel content. Thanks for watching.